Now I look at Lawrence Okole, let me ask a serious question here. What's this brother thinking? You're 6'5 at Cruiser, you're in your late 20s. I believe Okole's 28 years old. Haven't you talked to people older than you? Don't you realize that your metabolism eventually is going to slow down? Don't you realize that at 6'5 you're lucky to be able to make cruiser weight? Sooner or later you're going to be a heavyweight. Now if you're a heavyweight and you're 6'5 player, you better know how to fight leaning back. Guys are there trying to take your head off. You've got to use every advantage that you have. One of them should be your height, your reach. Spacing. Shouldn't it? This is the 6'5 guy who loses four inches in the ring because he's leaning forward. Think about that. So here I have Gloacki, who I think is much better than Okoli inside. And yes, inside matters. Here I have Gloacki fighting a taller fighter. I know you look at uh, photos of the two guys. One guy's taller than the other guy. And I know. I just know that Gloacki is going to get inside. I just know it. I know he's going to start throwing big punches inside. And Okoli might not know what to do. Let me just say too, it's simple math. If you're 6'5 and you're weighing 200 pounds, there's not a lot of meat on the bone. How many body shots can Okoli take? There's no body fat to cushion the blow. This guy is skin and bones. So, don't get me wrong. He hits hard with the straight right. Very hard. And if you're a cynic, you might say, how do you tame a southpaw? With straight right hands, right? Okoli hits hard with the straight right. He hits hard with the left hook. He has punching power. There's no question about it. But he's not a strong man. If this turns into a wrestling match, if Gloacki gets inside, keeps his hands going, refuses to get clinched, and you need Okoli to muscle with him, to hold on to him, Right to grab him closer to him, to smother his punches. I don't think this guy has the strength to do that. Everybody is going to get a prediction wrong. In fact, you can get majority of your predictions wrong. Okay, you can get a few right here and there. You might fist bump the air once in a while when you do score like, yes, at long last. Okay, the next 20 I'm probably going to get wrong in a row. But I think what sets Richard Dwyer apart from everybody else on YouTube here is the level of sheer authoritative arrogance in which he speaks. A lot of it is sophisticated sophistry, made up nonsense to make it seem as if he's, he's informed. If you were to listen to Richard Dwyer, you would actually get the impression that he spends majority of his time training the young youth at amateur level, bringing them up to professionals and then being a matchmaker. The way in which he spoke to Okoli there tells me that that is actually based unless you in fact, if you were a boxer or you've been around boxers, I don't think you talk to boxers like that. Who's he been talking to? And you know, another thing, aside from boxing that I've noticed about Dwyer in a few times, the few times that I've actually bothered to watch his video. And the reason why I saw this is like, once again, somebody put it on social media and then Okoli apparently um, called him out or shouted him out. Depends on how you, you want to see it. You can see it as a positive or you know whatever but uh, like, okay let's go for the positive he shouted Dwyer out you know what I mean like okay I did it but here's the thing that's the reason why I got to uh, see what I had to go back and actually see what Dwyer had to say and as usual as be has has become tradition with Dwyer he uh, manages to outdo whatever perception I probably thought I had in regards to what he has to say there's always the same old cliches for one thing which is just to me that he's coming from a very prejudiced almost racist baseline what do i mean by that if you set everything you do in regards to a african let's say nigerian fighter based upon the sample of samuel peter 
versus Vitali each and every fucking time. Each and every time, whether it's an Anthony Joshua fighting or Lawrence O'Coley fighting, then the baseline for measuring how they're going to perform is got to be a person who was not the same body type of any of those two fighters fighting against Vitali Klitschko. Then I think that the reference point you're actually using is their origin as opposed to their boxing skill. That's just the truth of the matter. I think that Dwyer, Robert, Richard Dwyer has a problem with black, Africans boxers, black African boxers who are successful and he thinks very little of them. That's okay. Fair enough. You have a level of prejudice. But even that should be rooted in fact, not feeling. And a lot of the time, Richard Dwyer goes by feeling and you can detect the level of malevolent disdain that he has for boxers. Let me give you an example. Anthony Joshua. He said that Tyson Fury said that he would beat Anthony Joshua within two rounds. He thought that Tyson Fury was exaggerated because I f he thought that he thinks, believe me, sorry, forgive me, that Tyson Fury would beat Anthony Joshua within one round. Now, that's prejudice right in there. There's no, I mean, I, okay, I can't say there's no way, but let's keep it real. If we are realist, if we are watching boxing, the suggestion that Tyson Fury, who has never finished anybody, even Tom Schwartz in one round, is going to finish Anthony Joshua in one round, suggests that there's something else involved in your thinking. And something else involved in your thinking when you do that. All right? So, hey, look, it is what it is. I'm just saying, like, um, the problem that we have with Dwyer is not so much that Dwyer gets shit wrong. It's the fact that he claims to be some sort of expert, which he's entitled to do if he wants to. There's going to be a bunch of idiots that listen to him. And, and you know, you've got to say that YouTube is amazing, man. He gets all these views. He gets all these comments and stuff. And that's why sometimes I, I feel kind of okay with the little views that I get. That's the absolute truth. Because I watch a lot of shit on there. A lot of it is absolute total fucking garbage. And I, I think that sometimes it speaks more about the people who choose to watch this type of stuff as opposed to the person who makes them. You know what I mean? And I mean, and, and I can't imagine, I can't fathom myself making that type of material and putting it out there. So I suppose uh, it is what it is. My material, I couldn't even try to make that type of material. That, that baseline ugly nonsense that people put out there. And they get loads of views for it. Hey, and credit to, you know, what sells, sells. But um, me, I, don't, I just can't, I can't do that. And I think Dwyer, despite his pomposity when he speaks, I think he's worse than an LDBC member. People give LDBC members crap all the time. Sometimes LDBC members make more sense, make more sense than Dwyer. Dwyer is absolute trash. I don't know, he's a European fighter loving trash fucking hack. It is what it is. That's my opinion of him anyway. I cannot see how many times, I mean you get something wrong, fair enough, but he speaks with such authority, such knowing when he says it. He's so dismissive. Okoli is skin and bone. I, I've never heard that one before. You call a guy lanky. Have you ever been in a fight with a lanky guy? You know what I'm saying? Okoli's not skin and bone. Okoli is not skin and bone at all. He's a lanky guy. And those kind of guys, even though they're not fight, they're very, very heavy and difficult to fight. This tells you a guy that has never, never really been in a fight before. Because if you see Okoli, you know that if that, that kind of fight, that kind of guy is a dangerous motherfucker to go against. He says, oh, he's skin and bone. Okoli's skin and bone. Oh, he can't be, he won't be able to deal with it. What difference? What's the difference between Okoli, in all honesty, and, um, I mean, fair enough, uh, Huey Fury. But well, Huey Fury is a heavyweight, but what's he going to do at heavyweight? What's he going to perform at heavyweight? You know what I'm saying? Let, let's keep it real. Unless Huey Fury puts on more muscle mass, all right, and tightens up a bit, I don't think he's going to be that successful. I wish him the best, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But without a big punch, with that frame, um, I don't know. I don't know. Without fast hands, very fast hands. Big punch, very fast hands, and great technique. Even... Usyk is looking kind of shabby at heavyweight. All right, even Usyk is looking kind of shabby and unimpressive at heavyweight. So at 28 years old, suddenly 28 years old, you can be a welterweight at 28. You could, at 28 years old, he's almost suggesting that because he's 6'5", he's too big for cruiser. Listen, man, Dwyer, man, I think we all know what's really at the bottom of what you of these of these uh, reviews. Sorry, previews that you give, these predictions and previews that you give when it comes to Anthony Joshua and Lars Okoli. I've seen it twice now. I think you're, you're you know, it's always Samuel Peters. <laughs> That's always a reference, baseline reference point. Samuel Peters versus Vitali. Vitali Klitschko versus Anthony Joshua. They said his muscles were too big. Oh, Okoli skin and bone. Get the fuck out of here. You don't even look in the condition to actually reference anybody's physiology. Jesus Christ.